a brief overview of logic and argumentation. Let's see if we can get this done in five minutes. Let's go. So there are two basic kinds of reasoning, deductive and inductive. Deductive reasoning typically moves from a more universal premise, for example, all men are mortal, to a more particular conclusion, for example, I'm mortal. Inductive reasoning typically moves from particular premises, for example, this guy is mortal, and so is that guy, and so is she, and so on, to a more universal conclusion, for example, all men are mortal. Deductive arguments establish certainty when correct, for example, if all men are mortal, and if I am a man, then it is certain that I am a mortal. Whereas inductive arguments establish only probability, not uncertainty, because perhaps who knows, we'll discover some black swan. Now, traditionally understood, the study of logic examines the structure of thought of which there are three essential components. Apprehension, which is grasping the intelligible content of something. Apprehension produces concepts which are expressed logically as terms. Judgment, relating two concepts to each other. For example, men and mortal, such as all men are mortal. Judgment produces judgments expressed logically as propositions. Reasoning, which is relating two or more judgments to some further judgment, and reasoning produces arguments commonly expressed logically as a syllogism. To expand on each of these points, terms answer to the question of what is it and are basic units of meaning with no structural parts. Because terms reveal conceptual apprehension, terms are never true or false, valid or invalid. Terms are only clear or unclear. Linguistically, terms are expressed as words or phrases, for example, man. Propositions answer to the question of is it and have two structural parts, subject term, what you're talking about, and predicate term, what is said about the subject. Because propositions are judgments, propositions are never clear or unclear, valid or invalid. Propositions are only either true or false. Linguistically, propositions are expressed as declarative sentences. For example, all men are mortal. Arguments answer to the question of why is it and have two structural parts as well. Premises assumed and conclusion as that which follows on from the premises. Because arguments involve reasoning, arguments are never clear or unclear, true or false. Arguments are only either valid or invalid. Linguistically, arguments are expressed in paragraphs. For example, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. Now, much of logic consists in deciding whether an argument is valid or not. If the terms are clear, the premise is true and the argument valid, then the conclusion must be true. Of course, we're focusing here on deductive argumentation. If, however, the terms are unclear, the premise is true and the logic valid, then the conclusion is uncertain. If the terms are clear, the premise is false and the logic valid, then the conclusion is uncertain. If the terms are clear, the premises are false and the logic valid, then the conclusion is once again uncertain. So to build an airtight argument, you must include clear terms, true premises, and valid logic. Or to avoid the conclusion of an argument, you must expose unclear terms, untrue premises, or invalid logic. Let's now talk about extension and comprehension of terms. So every term has extension and comprehension. Extension is all the real things a term refers to. For example, the extension of the term apple refers to all real apples. Extension is quantitative since it expresses the number of things to which the term refers. Comprehension, also sometimes known as connotation, is the inner meaning of the term. All the things the term includes or comprehends within itself. For example, the comprehension of the term apple is the fruit of the malus domestica. Comprehension is qualitative since it refers to meaning rather than number. Extension and comprehension vary inversely since as we increase comprehension, we decrease extension. For example, fruit versus tree fruit versus orange, we decrease the extension as we increase comprehension or specificity of meaning. Finally, let us briefly discuss fallacies. Fallacies are arguments which can appear to prove their conclusion, but in fact do not. There are two major types of fallacies, formal fallacies and informal or material fallacies. Formal fallacies are mistakes in reasoning related to that third act of the mind. For example, denying the antecedent, also known as the inverse fallacy, is a formal fallacy of the structure if P, then Q, not P, therefore not Q. For example, if a tornado were hitting my house, P, then my house would be shaking, Q. But there is not a tornado hitting my house, not P, therefore my house is not shaking, not Q. 
Such is a mistake, such is a mistake in reasoning because denying the antecedent, if a tornado were hitting my house, meaning there is no tornado hitting my house, does not rule out the possibility of your house shaking since effects can sometimes have multiple causes. For example, perhaps an earthquake is occurring. However, denying the consequent, known as modus tollens, is logically valid and of the form if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If a tornado were hitting my house, then my house would be shaking. My house is not shaking, therefore there is no tornado hitting my house. That is valid. Material fallacies, on the other hand, are mistakes in the content or meaning of an argument and thus more subtle and sometimes more difficult to detect. There are many classifications of material fallacies, including fallacies of language, equivocation, straw man, fallacies of diversion, red herring, to quo Q, fallacies of strategy, non sequitur, begging the question, fallacies of induction, hasty generalization, post hoc, ergo propter hoc, and more. Also note that context plays a role in material fallacies to determine whether the fallacy applies. For example, not all parts to whole reasoning is the so-called fallacy of composition. In other words, material fallacies are not as black and white as formal fallacies, and their detection is often as much art as science.